What is up, your Lashers Relax back here, and I'm here in NHL 15 on the last gen, the PlayStation 3 NHL 15, using the Vancouver Canucks here in a be a GM mode. And the reason I wanted to do this and show it to you guys is because I wanted to take a look at the Canucks of three years ago. The Canucks of three years ago to this day. It's September, October 2017, so I want to take a look at what the team was like three years ago in September of 2014. This is the team that Jim Benning was given. This is the team that had just fired Mike Gillis. This is the team that had just fired John Tortorella and that just brought in Trevor Linden, Jim Benning, and Willie Desjardins. These were the three guys who came in at this point in time. And this is actually a team that made the playoffs. Surprisingly, these guys lost in the first round to Calgary in six games and proceeded to draft Brock Besser. But we didn't draft Brock Besser in September 2014. That was at the end of the season. Right here, we're at the start of the season. And I really wanted to take a look at what the Canucks of three years ago were like. So without further ado, let's go into the lines right here and just take a look at what were presented. And right away, you can see that everybody here except for the Sedins is gone. The Sedins are the only offensive players here that are still with the team. Verbata, nope, he's with Florida now for some reason. He actually had a good year with the Canucks, his first year. This was his first year. One of the first moves that Benning did was sign Verbata to... Um, a five, six million dollar deal. I believe that's what it was, but it was for two years. Um, the first year, he had a 30 goal season. He was like top 10 in goals or something. Uh, 63 points in 70 something games. I believe it was 78, 79, I think. But Verbata was definitely a helpful offensive player. Um, he was a guy who stopped being good in his second year with Vancouver, 27 points in 60 games, but then he bounced back, had a 20-goal season with the Coyotes, and now he's a Florida Panther. So, Verbata, he's gone. The Sedins, they're still here. Daniel was actually ranked higher than Henrik in this version of NHL 15. For some reason, I don't know, like, who knows? Um, I remember looking at this three years ago and being like, wait, why are they not the same? I'm going to make Henrik a bit jacked more so he can be the same as Daniel. But that's besides the point. Looking at the second line of the Canucks three years ago, Chris Higgins, Nick Bonino, Alex Burrows. All three of these guys are gone. Burrows is an Ottawa senator, and he's the guy who brought us Jonathan Dolan. He's arguably a part of one of the best trades the Canucks have made in the past year, because as you guys know, Dolan's pretty darn good. He got sent back to Utica, but he's going to be tearing it up right there. He just recovered from um, from Mono, so boy, that sucks, but uh, he's now a part of the team. Burroughs, who was the guy he was traded for, is He's having a good run with the Senators. I don't know about you, but I was watching that playoff run. He was actually doing a pretty good job. He scored some big goals, and I, I wish the best of luck to Burroughs. I want the Senators to win a cup just for Burroughs. It's the Senators and the Sharks for me. Uh, looking at the center, Nick Bonino. Oh, boy. He was an 85 overall in this game. He was 26 years old in this game. He won two cups with the Penguins. Now he's a Nashville Predator. But, you know, what can I say about the guy? He won two cups. Looking at Chris Higgins, um, I'm actually not too sure what uh, Chris Higgins is up to right now. But, uh, you know, he's not on the team either. He was an 85 in this game, which is actually very solid. Alright, I'm on EliteProspects.com. Let's search up... Chris Higgins, and it looks like he's just been out of hockey. He's been out of hockey since 2016. His last little stint with, was with the Utica Comets, and other than that, he's just not signed anywhere else. Huh. I remember that. I remember him coming back and not, not really being that good, and everyone was kind of sad because he was sent down, but I, don't, I didn't realize that he didn't sign anywhere else afterwards, huh? That's weird. Uh, next up, we have Sean Mathias. He's gone as well. I remember this third line here, Matthias, Richardson, Cassian. These guys were the really good bottom six guys. These were the guys who shut down top lines in the midst of the Tortorella season for some reason. 
We went on a long winning streak, then we went on a long losing streak, and ended up picking Jake for 10 and 6th overall, so... Sean Mathias, it says that, um, oh yeah, right, he's a, he's a Jet. Totally forgot that he was a Jet, uh, played 45 games last season, uh, had 12 points in those games. He's gonna be starting with the Jets most likely again this year, and really he's just one of those bottom, maybe middle six guys, uh, Winnipeg definitely is a good team. Boy, I do like Winnipeg. Uh, Brad Richardson, on the other hand, he was a coyote for a bit. I'm not too sure what he's up to now. Uh, if we had to, if we take a look at on elite prospects, yeah, he's still a coyote. Um, he played not that many games last season, might have been injured, something like that, but he was a two-way penalty-killing guy on Vancouver, and he did a really good job at it, too. He was one of the better centers on the penalty kill, I remember that. I remember him actually doing fairly well, shutting down other top teams. And Zach Cassian here as the power forward, 84 overall, what, 22 years old in NHL 15? Something like that? Fantastic. He has the game of his life playing for the Edmonton Oilers. And he has a good series. And really, Zach Cassian, he's bound for great things. He's going to be a good player in this league. He is a good, he was a really good player for the Oilers. Um, Had a stint with Montreal in that lose-lose trade for Brendan Prust, uh, really didn't do much there, but then he gets sent over to Edmonton, and, whoa, he's improved. He has improved. Next up, we have Top Sixteedo, Tom Sestito, and, boy, arguably one of the worst forwards to play in the league in the past, like, three years. Tom Sestito is still a part of the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins, uh... He was given a PTO with the Pittsburgh Penguins. I guess they signed him to an AHL deal. Tom Sestito was not an NHLer. Lyndon Vay is another guy here. Uh, Lyndon Vay, I don't know what's up with him, but I'm pretty sure he's not uh, in the NHL anymore. Let me think about that. Wait, no. He's in the KHL, right. Um, I remember... It was earlier this year, actually. Lyndon Vay was leading the KHL in points. You know what? Let's look at that right now. Um, it says that he's a part of uh, Baris Sestana. All right. He's ninth in points, tied with Patrick Hursley, one point behind Pavel Datsuk. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there was, one, uh, there was a point earlier in the season where Lyndon Vay was actually leading uh, the KHL in points. I remember looking at the KHL standings because I was looking at Eli Tolvin and I saw L Lyndon Vay first and I was like, wait, what? Yannick Hansen down there on the fourth line, he's 81 overall. And Yannick Hansen, boy, he's one of the guys on the San Jose Sharks who actually had some good chemistry with Thornton. Like, he was a speedy guy that could feed them the puck. That's all Hansen was brought up to be here in Vancouver, and he did such a good job at doing that. Also, his shots were pretty good. Slap shots, wrist shots, he'd just come in, slap it down, and it was in the net. Uh, once in a while, he'd miss on those on those breakaway snipes. Oh boy, he'd miss a lot. But eventually, he started scoring more and more, so that was good. Really happy to get Goldobin um, in exchange for him, because Goldobin looks like he's going to be good in about a few years. He got sent down to Utica, but for now, Hansen is a good guy for the, Utica for the uh, San Jose Sharks. Moving on to defense, Kevin Bieksa, he's gone. Hamus, he's gone. Spiza and Stanton are gone. Edler and Tanev are the only two guys here. Kevin Bieksa is a guy who is arguably the worst defenseman on the, on the Ducks. Scratch that, he probably is. But, you know, he's got a big heart. And the Canucks fans are always going to love him. Kevin Bieksa was such a good part of the Vancouver Canucks organization. He couldn't go out with a bang. But we did get, what, a second or a third for him? One of those. We ended up using those that pick for something else. I forgot what it was. Um, I believe we got somebody. But Kevin Bieksa, he's the heart and soul of the Canucks. And he was for quite a bit. Uh, he might, may or not be the heart and soul of the Ducks. Probably not, but... He is not a good player anymore. Dan Hamus, he's definitely not worth an 88 overall. Um, I mean, three years ago, maybe he was the best defenseman on the Canucks, but now he's a Dallas star. He's invisible, kind of. I mean, that's what age does to you. That's what three years can do to you. Chris Tanev, though, he's like an 87 or an 88 in NHL 18. Back in this game, he was an 82. So with the revamped rating system in NHL 18, that's, you know, that's good. Tanev was what? 
24 in this game. He's 27 now. He solidified himself as one of the best defensive forwards, or not defensive forwards, defensive defensemen in the NHL. Lucas Pisa, he was actually with the team recently, but he got sent off to Las Vegas in that draft. Um, he was the scapegoat for a lot of bad Vancouver moments. But he did have some good improvement, especially when he played with Hutton. When he played with Hutton, he was really good. Ryan Stanton, on the other hand, totally forgot about Ryan Stanton. I wonder what he's doing nowadays. Let's search it up. Uh, Ryan Stanton is now with the Bakersfield Condors. So yeah, he hasn't played an NHL game since the 2015-16 season, and he's now with the Edmonton Farm Team. So, best of luck to Ryan Stanton. I mean, he's 28, uh, and doesn't look like he's really going anywhere, so... If we go to the... No, not Washington. I want to go to the the farm team. Yeah, let's go to the farm team. Okay, yeah, so going over to the AHL, I won't go super in-depth with these guys. Cal O'Reilly, uh, Ryan O'Reilly's brother, he got sent off to um, Buffalo to play with Ryan O'Reilly. Jensen, he's in the KHL too. Justin Jeffrey, got no idea. Hunter Shinkarek, Dane Fox, Mike Zalewski. Zalewski, is he still with the team? I'm not sure. Archibald actually looks like he might make the team. This year, like, he's st he's a playing on the fourth line right now as I'm speaking. Brendan Gauntz, he's in that blurry zone between AHL and NHL, but he has played in the NHL before he can. Kennens, he's, uh, he's playing for the Latvian KHL team. Kellen Lane, I got no idea what he's up to. Anton Rodin got sent down on waivers. Hopefully he clears so he can play with these comments once again. Brandon DeFazio, he probably left some time ago. I'm not too sure. I want to talk about Shinkarek and Fox, though. We'll talk about them a little bit later. Um, on defense, we got Sanguinetti. He's probably gone. Frank Corrado is on waivers again. Or maybe he cleared yesterday. I'm not too sure. But he was on waivers recently. Um, Anderson, forgot who that was. Kent Huskins, nope. Hank Tomernay, nope. Alex Biega, he's still here, kind of, kind of, but that's what the Comets looked like three years ago, and if we go to the GM options, take a look at the contracts that we got, and if we look at the main roster, we can see that the best players, they were Daniel Sedin and Dan Hamuse, if we go to goalies, uh, we can see that we had Ryan Miller, who was at 89, he was the best player on the team, he's now with Anaheim at probably an 83, 84 overall, 37 years of age. Eddie Lack is here, but he's with Carolina now. Uh, he's 29 now, and he's probably around an 84 overall, I'm not too sure. Jacob Markstrom really has to step up, because he's now the number one guy. It's him and Nielsen. These two are going to be the one-two punches down for the Canucks goaltending. It says here, Daniel Sudin and Hamus are both the same, uh... The Sedins turned 37 recently, so this game, or this roster was made before the Sedins' birthday three years ago. Uh, looking at things now, Edler, I guess he's an 85, 86, 87, one of those. Uh, Benino, he's probably an 83, not too sure. Maybe an 84. He won two cups, who cares? He can be whatever he wants, I'm sure he's happy. For Bada, he's playing with the, Ki or for, with the Panthers now. Burrows... Maybe more or less the same, maybe a little bit less than an 84. Cassian is probably like an 85 or an 86, honestly. If we look at potential right, right here, this is, kind of, this is kind of the more important thing that we got to look at. Cassian actually listed, or is actually listed as the best potential player on the Canucks main roster at a top six green. So four stars is about top six green, so he's a guaranteed top six forward. I'm pretty sure that's accurate to what he is now. So this was accurate. Nick Benino, he's probably playing in a bottom six role, but... Yeah, I think 85 is a little bit too high for him, honestly. Uh, Spiza, that's a top four low. Um, Spiza's a, a bottom pairing defenseman. Probably could be a top four defenseman with a good partner, like he had in Ben Hutton, but for the most part, I mean, this wasn't that bad in predicting things. Ryan Stanton is predicted as a top six um, defenseman uh, guaranteed with the green, so a top six green. He did not turn out to be that. He hasn't played an NHL game in a long time. Lyndon Vay, he's in the K. Uh, Tanev, he's still here. Yeah, top six yellow? Top six maybe? No, he's not a top six maybe. He's He can play on the top two if he's needed there. But yeah, he's a top four guy. That That's, yeah, Tanev was underrated even back then. Uh, Matthias, nah. 
And these guys we can just we can just shove aside. Tom Sestito was listed as a bottom for bottom six, uh, maybe. So yeah, jeez. Um, no, not Toronto. Not Toronto. That's for a different video. Uh, going over to in the system here. So the the overalls don't really matter here because in the system is just all the prospects. So if we take a look at the in the system potentials, what the Canucks had back then, Hunter Shinkarik as the best player. This was our best prospect right here, Hunter Shinkarik. Uh, jo Joachim Eriksson and Joe Kanata. No, these guys didn't. They they weren't good. Hunter Shinkarik was our best prospect, an elite medium, at 19 years of age, 74 overall. Now he's 22, and now he just got sent down on waivers, and it just cleared. Hunter Shinkarik, my goodness. So, Jake Vertanen, this was the player that they took um, in the 2014 draft, the Tortorella year. He was listed as a, as a top six medium. Who knows what he is right now? He's still playing in the NHL um, in the preseason. Who knows how it'll turn out. Uh, for now, Hunter Shinkarik doesn't look like he'll be a, t um, a, a first line, maybe. Doesn't look like he'll be a first liner. Bo Horvat, he was listed as a top six medium back then. Boy, he's a top six green right now. So, Nicholas Jensen, he's gone. Jared McCann. Who knows what's up with Jared McCann, but he was listed as a top six medium back then. Gons is still with the team. Corrado was gone. Castles, still in the organization. Same with Subban. These guys... Um, they have a chance to make the NHL one day, maybe. Sanguinetti, nope, his, he doesn't have a career. Uh, Anton Cederholm, I believe we released his rights. I'm not too sure about him. And the rest of these guys are all just gone, other than Biega, who somehow has stuck around with the team. So, yeah, we got Anton Rodin here too. He was under really weird circumstances. Um, yeah, taking a look at this team... This team sucks. Like, we got one good prospect, or four, five good prospects. Four if you don't include Jensen, because Jensen is twenty is twenty one in this game. Um, Hunter Shinkarik is our only good prospect. And if you take a look at what Benning has done with this team, I know he wasn't that good of a GM. He's made some really questionable moves that don't really solidify him as a good GM. But he's on our side. And there were some really good moves that he did do. Some of these moves include changing Burroughs and Hansen for Godolbin and Dolan. Godolbin and Dolan are not are other um, potential top six, maybe maybe like middle six guys. These are middle six maybes, almost greens if you if you want if you want to take it like that. But Burroughs and Hansen, these guys were exchanged. Dolan is probably like a top six, maybe, maybe a top six green. Godolbin is like a middle six, maybe. So who knows how that's going to go along, especially with um, Burroughs' exchangement, Jonathan Dolan being such good um, friends with Eliash Peterson, who we drafted. Uh, I mean, taking a look at this team, this team was able to make it to the first round of the playoffs. Okay. Take out all of these players except for two. We're replaced with what? Bo Horvat, Marcus Granlin, uh, Sven Berchi. And like, it's just a whole different team than it was three years ago. We've lost so many guys and gotten so many guys coming in. Not really bringing these guys in as in signing free agents or whatever, but just having so many guys come in through the system. Bo Horvat is now on the team. Brendan Gantz, Jake Vertan, and these guys came through the Canucks system and they're now playing, and it took three years. So, taking a look at the team we have now, um, we definitely have more than just one super good prospect in Hunter Shinkarik. Hunter Shinkarik traded for Marcus Granlin. What a good trade. Oh my goodness. In hindsight, it was a fantastic deal. Benning made out like burglary. Same thing with that second for Sven Berchi trade. Oh my goodness. Solidified NHL player for a second round pick. Nice. That's pretty good. Solidified NHL player for Hunter Shinkarik. That's pretty good too. Nice job, Benning. That was great. Um, I really, really do think it's such an improvement over what we had in the 2015 team. Of course, we made the playoffs then. We're not going to make the playoffs now. Of course, this team that we have in this video game right now is better than the Canucks now. But the Canucks now have just, they have such a good direction. 
And that's not what this team had. This team here in the video game was a team built for like one or two years of success. And the team that we have now is loaded with so many more good prospects that I'm excited for the future. Back when we had this team, I was excited for Jared McCann and Hunter Shinkarik. Look at how these guys turned out. Man, who knows if uh, Eliash Peterson or Yolivi are going to turn out like these guys too, but we got guys like Brock Besser and Bo Horvat coming in who already look like they're going to be very good players in the, in the upcoming years. Who knows how the Canucks in the future are going to be like, but I gotta give props to Jim Benning. He made some bad moves, but he did some good ones as well, and those good ones definitely involved building the future direction of this team, because as the Canucks go forward through the 17-18 season, these young guys are just gonna get better and better, and as guys get injured, we're calling up the Utica guys. The Utica comments are stacked this season. They're absolutely stacked, and... These players are going to have a chance to play in the big leagues this year. That's the Canucks of 2017-18. It's just a whole bunch of moving parts, with young players coming in, young players sitting out, players getting injured, other guys filling in those spots, but overall, this is a year for growth. Hope you guys enjoyed this video for your social like and Oscar Gaming, and bye. <laughs>